So we've been and bought all fresh vegetables and sauces and that for the Asian cooking. Went to the organic shop, didn't we, Rhino? At yeah. um, Steve Irwin Way. Yeah, that was awesome. Aldi and Woolies. Oh, we did the trifecta. So it was called that too. Uh, Aldi, Woolies and and the, uh, what do you call it? The organic the Organics. Shop. So we've got ourselves some chicken thighs, some beef stir fry, two of, so we can some That's for later. That's lamb just lollipops. <laughs> um, so with this, we're going to make a big batch of um, chicken and cashews with nice. lots of fresh vegetables. And with this, we're going to do um, beef and black bean. Ooh. Um, and we'll use a mixture of different fruit, oh, sorry, vegetables. Um, probably to use a green capsicum with the beef and black bean, I reckon, but we'll use red capsicum for the um, chicken and cashews. Mix up the vegetables so that they're not just a mixture of the same stuff. So yeah. They'll be slightly different, and plus you could, then you're going to have the two different sauce flavours. You can have that with rice, or you can have it on your own. Lots of um, fresh produce in it. Probably about 60% vegetables, 40% meat. Um, which is really how a lot of the Asian cuisine is. They have, they still eat meat, yeah. but they have a high in vegetables and things like that too. Yeah, right. Especially, the, especially Thai and kind of Southeast Asian countries. Mm. Lots of fresh stuff. So yeah. We'll, um, and it's we'll funny with on. all the rice and stuff that they eat, they're all really lean. They've only become big in the last 20 years since all the Western bakeries and KFCs and all that, and 7-Elevens have hit Thailand. Uh -huh. yeah. They were the thinnest country on planet Earth with the lowest incidence of diabetes. Now they're one of the biggest in Asia with the most incidence of diabetes. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's because they go to the 7-Eleven. And uh -huh. one of the big changes, instead of making big fresh vegetable soups, Ryan, yep. what they do is they, they you go to a supermarket in Thailand and they'll have those magi add, just add water soups. Oh, yeah, yeah. That and are just wheat like, and whatever. There's no vegetable in it. It's pretty much, yeah, just... Um, MSG and yeah. Um, yeah, some sort of artificial flavorings. And like right, that. and so they, they just add hot water and that's that, like you, they'll have whole aisles stacked to the roof of it mm. with millions of different flavors because it's so popular there. And while they taste good, like it's basically just sodium. Yeah. Um, and, but you know, in the old days they would, they wouldn't waste any piece of meat. Like you wouldn't buy it from the shop like that. You get a whole chicken or you buy the chicken mm. alive then you'd use every part of it, you know? They'd use all of the bones and all of the carcass to mm. create a broth. Right. With all of the other vegetables that they throw in, so every part of it's being used and not wasted. Yeah, I notice when you go we to Thai markets, they sell a lot of offal and all that too. Yeah. Is well, that what it's called, offal? Kidneys, hearts, yeah, stomachs, yeah. Yeah. eyeballs, brains, well, noses, dicks. Well, well, it's real food, eh? I mean, I probably wouldn't need a, a, a cock dick, but <laughs> a chicken dick. Maybe I have already though, probably in chicken probably nuggets. Probably in chicken or some nuggets. Shit. Meat pies, I'm sure, I've eaten cow ones and camel ones and whatever meat they use instead of beef there. Yeah. They did a big special on that. They weren't even beef in those pies. It was camel, buffalo, everything but cow. Any cheaper cut. I want to go. Um, I actually went to buy some goat the other day because I wanted to make a goat curry because it's, you know, it tastes similar to lamb, but it's got a fat in it. Yeah, right. But I put, they didn't sell any, they didn't have any. any. I've seen, actually, I've seen that before. A lot of people have gone off lamb, especially if they've got diabetes, because there's too much fat in the well, lamb for them. It's just so fatty. If, yeah. if you grab those four quarter chops, which I love, mm. put them in a slow cook, yeah. and you cook them for like eight hours or something, <laughs> then you open it up, and once it's all settled, yeah. you've got like this thick wow. layer of just like... And when it cools, it goes solid, doesn't it? Solid it's fat. Solid, and it's basically, yeah. Um, artery cloggers. You know? um, with oil, do you mainly use olive oil or do you olive use... Olive oil, yeah. Or um, peanut oil is okay. Um, okay. Because it's like, I think if you're using... Yeah, olive oil is probably the best. Okay. Like, like olive oil, if you eat lots of it, you're still going to... It'll still make you fat, but it won't clog your arteries. So, okay. So it's good, you know. Um, try and stay away from canola oil or... Yeah. Um, even though... I mean, how good does chips taste cooked in animal fat? But Much better but in animal fat. But if you've got fat. high cholesterol, like I do, you know, mm. trying to lower it, it's like stay away from that. Mm. Eat more grains, eat heaps of fibre, mm. tons of vegetables, and still have meat, but just limit it and try and get cuts that aren't too fatty. Yeah, yeah. yeah.
I, I never worry about thigh and chicken breast though, because there really is only about five to ten percent difference in the fat. It's not. It's oh, it's so yeah. marginal that I prefer the dark meat. It's much softer. It's juicier. Yeah, thigh meat is awesome. Yeah, but the, t I think turkey breast is zero percent fat, whereas chicken oh. breast has still got some. Turkey breast. Is, I like it too because it's um. Yeah, it's nice. Well, it's it's kind of a little bit more rich and gamey, but I like that, especially in like a meal that. Like slow cook, that's why goat is good in a curry. You cook it for 10 hours or whatever, slow. Yeah, right. It, and it's delicious. Same, I've got a question. Yeah, I've got a question for you about um, prawns. Prawns have got no fat in them, but apparently if you get diagnosed with high cholesterol, they tell you you can't eat bloody prawns anymore, lobsters and that. Well, well, what's that about? I don't know exactly. Is, it, is cholesterol been... caused by fat? What causes cholesterol? Do you know? Trans fats, it's like, yeah. Like... Well, there's no fat in a bloody lobster or prawn what are they on about but anyway you can't eat it yeah i don't know they reckon it's on your or not to eat list they say um oh what do they say they say not to eat um oh, they say to eat look yeah so if you've got high cholesterol they say to eat um like fatty fishes like sardines oh. um tuna salmon especially kippers i suppose any of those fish that are kind of very oily yeah right they say um, don't or do no they say do yeah oh right it's, it's high in omega-3 oh. omega-3 or five one of the two yeah where's your knives at uh top drawer yep and the, those little ones with the the neon handles they're the sharpest and best with the neon handles yeah, oh, yeah. You, do you have a sharpener or a stone no but those those little ones will cut through anything mate okay. they're, they're, that's why i got them because they're while they're small, they're, they, they're great for large amounts of cutting. Some people like a big knife, some like a small. Yeah. I like a small one. And that those ones are sharp as anything. They're really good. Cool, cool. All right. I do like a chef, like a bigger knife. No way, but that'll do. We'll use one of the two. All my big um, ones are a bit blunt. But you, you can try using that big one. I've seen people use it here. Cutting board. I ha There's a little one over there. I had big plastic sheets, but the cleaners and all that and other carers have... Put them everywhere, so I don't know where they are. But I've got great big. There's three or four, like neon coloured ones. Oh yeah, like the, the little thin ones. Yeah. yeah I've got them. And I, I don't know where they've put them, but they've got to be in the kitchen somewhere. I would would have thought. Hiding your stuff away from you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I couldn't find my bowls for a couple of weeks, and I realised that they'd been putting them away somewhere else. Putting them in the laundry. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, some of the people have done that kind of stuff too, honestly. Uh, you might just use that little one, yeah, I'm afraid. Right. We'll get by. Okay, so first I'm gonna do this board. I'll just move these sauces out of the way so we can see the it's, action. It's not, it's, not, it's not actually a little board, it's just a huge knife. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so um, we'll get a big um, bowl just to throw all the veggies and stuff in. You can empty that fruit bowl if you want to use it. Yeah, there should be another something here we can use. Oh, well, there's definitely... Oh, here we go. Just anything. Indeed, sir. So, start, so we're going to make the chicken dish first. With the chicken dish, you're going to do that thing with the bicarb and make them soft too, or...? Yeah, we can do that. Oh, although, I love that. you don't necessarily need to yeah. because of its chicken thigh. It's pretty good. Okay. Whatever you say, chef. And if he turns yeah, into Gordon know. Ramsay and starts going, you effing say it, all that, I'll have to cut that bit out and not put it on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> <my> hands, <laughs> that Gordon Ramsay. You bloody wanker. <laughs> <laughs> Get out of here, you pathetic. Some of the stuff that he, when he goes into, he had Hell's Kitchen or something like that, and he was yeah. going into people's kitchens. Oh, yeah, like they oh. and they have, um, what do you call it? Their hotels and things like that. Yeah. Just them a new one. And they're store, storing fish and on a shelf and not in the fridge. And you go, yeah, yeah it stinks. How long's that been? Oh, two weeks. You can't serve that to people. You kill them. Yeah. It's, and they go, no, I can and I do. And that's when he starts going, you F and C. Yeah. What the hell's wrong with you? So you can see why Some he loses it. Some people just don't understand. Like, I mean, even in um, high school, I just like to cut this kind of rustic and have, so that you actually get pieces. 
so it's not cut so you don't want it to be cut too thinly otherwise it'll bo like boil up and just it'll kind of stew you want it to be in big chunks yeah. hit it with high heat so it sears and it stays crunchy oh yeah. see this is why it's here people expertise like that and this is what you're going to learn on the ryan cooking show the ryan and richie cooking show yeah, we'll use a whole capsicum because because we can there's going to be tons of vegetables in this. A decent amount of chicken and then we're going to, we can actually put them all, we can divvy it up into like, um, into either freezer bags. Freezer bags are kind of... I've got lots of lunchbox type things under you there. Perfect. I don't have, I don't think at the moment I've got any of those. I used to have big piles of those. Throwaway ones. Yeah, and I still might. There might be some in the bottom of the pantry, yeah, but yeah. I, I, even there's not this permanent the sort of Tupperware. The reusable ones are better anyway because they're yeah. not going into um, turtles' mouths and stuff. I'm getting eaten by dolphins. Yeah, I hate cruelty to animals. Oh, you know down at Cedar Lakes? Yep. You feed yep. the turtles. Did you yeah. do that when you were there? I can't remember. it. Like I said, it was like literally 30... 32 years ago or something, but they used to, used to be able to go there and it was kind of like, you know, the movie Dirty Dancing where, yeah. they, where you go to like a, well, what do you call it? It's like a country club yeah. type vibe and everything's there. You can go bike riding or you can do dancing or you can yeah. do all these different, um, you know, there's heaps of activities and you've got staff, you know, staff that do all of the entertainment activities and whatever else. And it was like that back in the day. And, they, and nobody left you in the corner there. Yeah, no one left baby in the corner. <laughs> and, um, but yeah, and I remember you, you were able to hire bikes and there was this hill got, like, going down the hill. And I remember that was the first time I rode a bike with no, um, with no hands, rolling, riding it down a hill. Oh yeah. Did you come yeah. off or did you no, no, ma good. manage it? Good job. I used to do it and I was like, wow, this is so cool. <laughs> but I, I, I'm from the time we didn't have helmets and pads and all that when we were oh, kids. Oh, we didn't have helmets on that, that time either, and that would have been probably 91, 92. Yeah, it was so nice. And you know what else? But back in the day, I, I was before seat belts as well. Yep. You didn't have to wear seat belts. And I was before RBT, so I remember a lady was drunk driving as well. Yep. <laughs> Fire, eh? I can remember when they first advertised that. As of this weekend, we'll be testing your blood limit, and you're only allowed to have this many beers because it's point. Was 0.08 point originally? 0.08, yeah. Yeah. And, and, and I remember everyone going, what? I can only have five beers. Or <laughs> I can understand, like, <laughs> I can understand, like, it being bad to drive drunk, of course. But, yeah. but really, um, this, you know, they're spending, sometimes I feel like police should be out catching real criminals, and, yeah. except for all traffic offences. Like, <laughs> you know, yeah, we're over regulated now. Well, that was the start of it. Like, look at all of these kids that are out there stealing people's cars and. Like, you know, stealing people's cars while they're at home in their house sleeping at night. Well, not just sleeping. They're walking with machetes and stuff yeah. and saying, give me the keys to your fancy car or we'll kill you. Yeah, you get and then driving off with it. Yeah, you get a speeding ticket for going, coming out of the tunnel <laughs> in Brisbane and going like 10 k's over the limit when it should be 60 or whatever. But you're trying to move with the traffic and you're just, you know. Yeah. It's like, and me always getting pulled over for being too handsome. I'm sick of it. Yeah. Look at it, handsome hey. hairs are fine. What for? You're handsome and I'm jealous. Gotta hate that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. okay, so we're gonna go capsicum, onion, definitely. Um, <laughs> I don't think. Then in comparison, there's you. You walk out the front and they go, right, let's book him for indecent exposure. Look at his head. Get him out. <laughs> get him, get him out. <laughs> I'm get just him joking. Him I'll him tell you back. a funny one. There's an old Rodney Rude joke. He goes, he goes, um. Uh, <laughs> I think about it without laughing. He goes, there's this chick, she's really ugly. And then someone in the crowd goes, how ugly, Rodney? He goes, well, put it this way. She was uh, so ugly, they used to hire her at the local bakery and squish her face in the dough to make gorilla biscuits. <laughs> and then he goes, anyway, after I made love to her, but he used the expletive. <laughs> yeah. After I made love to her, it just cracks you up. And then the other funny thing he said, one of his funniest thing is, he had this song called I Hate That. And he's thinking yeah. about all the things he hates. And the th one of the things he hates... Oh, that onion smells gorgeous. Yeah, it's strong. It's making my eyes water. Yeah, it smells good from back here, though. And anyway, he goes, oh, I hate it when you drive past the STD clinic. 
at all the people from last night's orgy are all milling around out the front. I hate that, yeah. <laughs> well, he was mad, but he was banned in Queensland for that filth. He couldn't perform up here. Oh, yeah. I, we, um, I had one. I had a CD of him <laughs> once back years ago, and he always listened to it when we, when we were out fishing. When I lived yeah. The Wit Sundays, and it was just hilarious stuff. Well, when, when it first came out, I was only eight or ten or something like that, and it was just like every kid had it on the tape deck because we all, you know, when you're that age, you love bum jokes and all, yeah. all the filthy language just cracks you up and all that. Yeah, of course. And we didn't get half of it too, but, like, <laughs> yeah. it was sort of like a, a, I don't know, rite of passage. And I can remember one day we were coming back from Queanbeyan in the ACT on the back of an action bus. And we're playing it loud on the bus and all the blokes, the older blokes on the bus were laughing really hard and going, you blokes are awesome, thanks for playing that. You know, they hadn't heard it. And they're going, what is that? We're going, it's Rodney Reed. <laughs> and they're laughing. Yeah, it was good. It was a bonding thing between... You know what? In the old days, especially in Canberra, older dudes and younger dudes used to bond over stuff like that. They wouldn't be saying, turn that filth off. I don't want that racket on the bus. They'd be laughing and going, oh, you kids are cracking me up. What is that? Yeah. And you'd make friends with the older dudes and they'd look out for you. And when I was younger, I, I swear to you, never once did I ever go to the shop without some bloke coming up and scruffing my hair. You know, they do the thing with, yeah. hang on, they do that. Yeah, you you go, how are you, fella? How are you, little know, tiger? Yeah. You know, or, yeah. or if you had a cap gun, they go, shoot me, shoot me. And then you'd shoot it at them. Yeah. And they go, oh, you're a good shot. You got me right in the heart. I'm dying. I'm dying. Yeah. Now, blokes don't talk to other people's kids now. You'd be a sex, oh, you'd be naughty. You'd be naughty. Yeah, or you'd be just... Just considered yeah, a weirdo. Yeah, but that, but, but, to my kid, man. Yeah, that's right. And you know, they had that in that Joker movie, actually. He was smiling with that kid. She turned around and said, stop bothering my child. Yeah. You know, but back when he was a kid, because he's the same age, and when I was a kid, the older men cracked jokes with him. Oh, oh, if you were wearing a cape yeah. and a mask, they'd be going, Batman's here, Batman. Yeah. You'd get 50 guys say it on the one shot. We're saved. Yeah, that yeah, and you felt connected to the older men that made you feel part of the community and safe. And they'd call you young man, little man, yeah, all that, and invite you into the brotherhood. But no, nah, not anymore. And I, I think that's a shame, actually. Yep. That's a real shame. It's something in society that's not useful, not helpful. That's we're talking about overregulated. There's one where people are too tight on stuff and got bad ideas. Because yep. in general, most blokes are good guys, and they want to. Impart knowledge. One of the smartest things you and I can do, Ryan, is find guys older than us. Mm -hmm. They will teach you anything and everything. It's, I think it might be from the caveman days or something. They want to teach younger men stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It's like you. You've been itching to teach me cooking. You want to teach stuff. Uh, men want to teach other men stuff. We do. Yeah. Survival cool. skills. We're uh, inherently, and we want to locate each other. Like right now, we've been talking about all the health food and that. That's oriented and located us to eat right, right? Yep. Yeah. So, oh, that ginger smells wonderful, dude. Yeah. So, so, so that's what you're doing. You're teaching me stuff, but you're also orienteering me by showing me the vegetables, taking me. You took me to the vegetable shop. You yeah. didn't take me to the drive thru and go, let's get a bloody bunch of French fries yeah. and a milkshake. But no, no, let's go this here. This is the best deal. Get the, get the value bundle from McDonald's. No. Yeah, exactly, mate. So this, I mean, is, this is how men are supposed to relate, how we are today. Yeah. And this is when men are at their most happiest. And they've snuffed it out. And I don't like it, mate. Yeah. They've snuffed it out. But this is how men were with kids too. They love to stand around and go, look, mate, the reason I'm cutting up this ginger is because it's good for your heart. Yeah. Tastes good. And that's one of the secret ingredients in that, you know, when we go to go have Asian food down at Chinatown and we go, what's that flavour? That's probably what it is. Ginger. Ginger and garlic and just the mixture of all those aromatic. Um, Are you talking about, I'm oh, sorry to cut you off, mate. Yeah. Are you talking about Chinatown in um, Brisbane? Oh, uh, or just more anywhere? Like Sydney or Melbourne, but yeah, yeah. Because Chinatown in Brisbane is kind of only. The valley there, isn't it? It's only yeah. like one little, one tiny little stretch. Whereas Chinatown in Sydney, awesome. And yeah. Melbourne, I think it's Box Hill. Mm. Yeah, that's good. A little chopped up stuff, people. Chopped Brilliant. Up, tons of veg there. We've got onion, capsicum, mushrooms, broccoli. Um, and we're not really going by a recipe other than just lots of vegetables, decent amount of meat. Um, we're going to use... Oyster sauce. We might do a dash of this one. We'll see what it tastes like first. I find using this with garlic and um, soy sauce 
maybe a little bit of chicken powder, chicken stock powder. Uh, which dish is this? Is this the black bean or this is no, the, this is the chicken, cashew. chicken cashew? Yeah, right on. Yeah. Yeah. So we've got that sorted. Oh, right. You've actually got black bean sauce over there, do you? Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Yep. Oh, the black bean. Yeah. And also bought some sesame oil because I realised we forgot that. Okay. Okay, so now I'm going to chop the chicken. Nice. Chop the chicken on the left hand side. <laughs> <laughs> so. All these old references. Do you even understand my references? Like, that's an old. Yeah, that was, um, uh, what do you call it? Um, the, uh, was it the Melody Makers? Melody Makers passed the Dutch chip on the left hand side. Um, it no, was... it was Sonic Youth, I think they were called. They, um, they were little oh, kids. No, no, not Sonic Youth. It was something youth, but it wasn't yeah. Sonic. Yeah, and it was a couple of Bob Marley's children were in it. No, I didn't know that. Yeah, I think it was his daughter and maybe one of his sons, maybe Ziggy. Um, what was it yeah, it's playing on my mind youth. now. What are they? Mm, yeah, not... Was it Sonic Youth? Because that was youth. another band, that wasn't was, it? Sonic Youth was, youth was like the late, they were like a grunge band from the late 80s, early 90s. Yeah, I was never big on grunge. I don't, I don't like grunge too much. Okay. I, I always liked um, the, the, the bigger songs of Nirvana and the, because I think it was mainly because I liked the drumming. Yeah, well, Dave Grohl was a bit of a weapon on the drum day. Yeah. Okay. Turns out they're all disco beats. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I saw an I interview. Did see, I did see something. Him actually saying that, hey? Yeah. Yeah. So for that amount of vegetables, I reckon we cut probably... Four of these chicken thighs. Okay. I'm just dicing them up into sort of centimetre bits round about. There's a million ways you can chop chicken. But this is just going to be nice and simple. So you get like bite-sized pieces. Did you them. work in food industry or was your father was a chef and you just watched your dad? What happened there? Yeah. yeah so dad. there's an example. Your father taught you this stuff and you watched and learned. Yeah. And totally. it would have been good times with you and, and I had questions because I was always interested in cooking, so I'd ask him and he'd be able to explain to me how they do that. How do they make it taste like this or whatever? What's that flavour? You know? What was his specialty, Asian cooking or just no, anything in uh, general? French. He owned a French, oh, wow. owned a French restaurant um, back when I was born, I think. Did you do French pastries and desserts? Yeah. He did like those... Um, he did... Um, Croken bushes and stuff, you know, the big um, profiterole cakes for wedding cakes with the, the, like these beautiful pastries with full of cream and stuff um, with, oh, we got there, with uh, toffees like sprinkled, you, so they go, they all get put on top of each other in a big like um, pyramid type thing. That sounds delicious. And then it's um, sprinkled with you know, toffee that goes hard all over the top of it. Yeah, right. Yeah, so that was one of the famous kind of wedding cakes and stuff that he used to do. It'd, it'd be interesting then um, to to go to the French restaurant at Landsborough because he's a French pastry chef as well. He's Pakistani, but he learned... He learned... I think he went to France for a while and then Miami as well, but he, he learned on French islands, like they're... Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, sort of Indian and African ones, but they were French islands as well. Uh -huh. That's where he learned his French stuff. But it'd be interesting for you to taste his pastries and and, and you know, see how similar or not they are to your old man's. And yeah, I'm trying to remember when <clears throat> the last time I was a dad did a croquet bush for a family member or something, and we had some, and I just remember being like the best dessert because of the because the pastry. It's just so lovely and fluffy and wow. And then inside of it, it's got a filling. They're all filled with yummy cream and whatever else, maybe some caramel. And then on the outside, it's all just been kind of, there's a hard, crispy glaze all over it of toffee. Yum. You know, yeah, I've been having banoffee, which is like got toffee and caramel or something on top of banana and cream and oh, yeah. a biscuit base. He does that. It's really, it's really good. Sounds yummy. So he's definitely making that sauce that you're talking about. And put it on different things. Yeah. But yeah, he did everything from, he did from, you know, like the, the, um, sort of French standards, like, um, 
escargot, snails, and frogs' legs. And I never want to try any of that. It sickens me, the concept. Really? I can't. Im I just can't imagine them tasting it. Uh, well, do you like it? I don't. I've never had that, those because, as I said, I was only born when, he, when that was a thing. Yeah, right. And I think... I think it's probably not overly common to buy frog's legs unless you're living in a city. Yeah, you um, The snails you eat, but I've heard that they're awesome and the old man seems to like them and we have pretty similar tastes for, yeah. Okay. Taste and texture kind of ideas, mm -hmm. I guess. Mm. Yeah. I, I like know. oysters and stuff like that and I like sardines, what do you call them? I'll eat an anchovy straight out of the tin. I love anchovies. Yeah, right. I want to try you're that. Just not, you're just probably best not to kiss anybody after you have. Because, <laughs> it, yeah, it's pretty hardcore. Okay, so we've got our chicken there. So that's preparation for the first dish. Um, have you got, um, like, freezer bags at all? No, sorry. Okay, that's all right. Um, glad wrap. I do. That's in the cupboard there somewhere. How handy is Glad Wrap? <laughs> um, could actually probably put those in with those other fillets you've got in there that are marinating. Um, or we can just leave them as well. Use yeah, I'll, I'll use a different marinade because that one's a Thai sweet chili. Uh -huh. And then I've also got a sweet chili, which is a, for some reason a bit different. Okay. So I'll try it with the other sweet chili, those ones. I'll have to cook those ones today though, because I marinated them yesterday. Is there, like, how long can you leave them marinating? Um, a couple of days. Okay. I would say 48 hours would be the go. All right. Um, any more than that, you, you know, you just don't want the chicken starting to get funky. Yeah. Okay, so I'll just tidy up my mess so that I can start chopping all the stuff for beef and black beans. Right on. And actually, we will do our um, um, baking soda on the beef as well, just to tenderize it. Oh, well. yeah. Baking soda. I've wanted to do this soda. so bad because there's a there's an Asian guy. I think he I think he's got a restaurant in Canberra as well, yep. but he's from I think he's from the west of Sydney somewhere, and he he's got I think he's even got 44 million subscribers or something crazy. No, it couldn't be that many, could it? No, four million, I'd say, more yep. likely. Um, he's got millions of subs anyway, and, and, and he often does videos about the velvet beef or whatever it's called, and yeah. I've always wanted to try it at yeah. home because I like the style of beef, but then I feel sick from the MSG at restaurants, so yep. we're doing it here, but we're not going to have the MSG no to make MSG. me feel sick. No so that's what, yeah. No additives, just beef and... All you do is you put it in a bowl with a bit of water, and so water does go in with the beef and the bicarb, and basically this stuff just... It just sizzles the meat in a way. It kind of it doesn't cook it, but it sort of it starts to eat into the fibers of it. That makes it tough. Yeah. How long do you have to um, let it sit? We can let it sit. Um, by the time if I cook or if we cook the um, first dish, get rice cooked and everything. By that time, if it's been sitting there for an hour or more, that'll be enough. Yeah, right. But if you do it overnight, you get the best results. But sometimes it gets a bit too soft and funny. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna press stop. I'm gonna start it again. And do a beef and black bean one. Okay. Goodbye for was it preparation of chicken? Yep. Yeah.